Alright then everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. And it's back to the beginning of this segment for me because I don't apparently know the dimensions of a two-space wide object. So yeah, hopefully I won't have to deal with that mess again because that wasted a lot of time. Make it all the way to the left, then back uh, one step to the right. There's another route that would go through Arvis' house, but I already know most of this way from an earlier segment, so I can kind of coast off of my knowledge there a little bit, whereas I don't know any of the route through Arvis' house at all, really. I mean, I should, but... I don't know the way up there because some of that was reliant on the timing of the music before, which I don't have because there's a different song playing here now, which it's weird to think about because that wouldn't normally make any difference whatsoever, but I mean, I guess I could probably time it another way, but forget it, I can do this way just as easily. And I remember... The uh, initial trip through the mines with Terra at the beginning was just a tad awkward in terms of the routing there, so I think I'm going right next. So I don't want to deal with those shenanigans. One thing I've noticed is that I actually tend to remember the routes from my earlier segments a little bit better than the ones from the more recent segments. Wow, I'm taking a lot of hits. With the more recent segments, it's like the, uh, it's just gone into my short-term memory and it hasn't really sunk in quite as much. I don't know, but I can remember some of my earlier routes fairly clearly, and some of the more recent ones, like not the really recent ones like Owser's Mansion, I mean like some of the more recent ones like Cave on the Velt maybe. Kind of fuzzy. Definitely anything back before uh, Cave of South Figaro is really fuzzy. Alright, should have made it through there. It's not a very far walk, and I would have had another battle if I was marching uh, uh, into the dungeon that long. This isn't a very far distance, so I'm not super much expecting a battle here. Alright, run to the Strand Cliff Face, to down. This is one room in the particular that I very much remember from the first time I went through here. I'm not sure why this one sticks in my head so much, but because it does, I'm picking a route that I may not have chosen with the benefit of hindsight, but it's the one I already know, so there's no reason in uh, reinventing the wheel here. I mean, this certainly isn't a truly bad way to go through this area, but... Might have been a better route if I searched. Then again, I did have a reason, whatever, however good that reason was, to go through this area in this way before, so who knows. Man, I am not escaping battles so quickly today. That's okay, won't have to deal with uh, that much longer. So Mog at this point, doesn't raise the average level high enough to... Uh, whoopsie. I don't think that'll matter. Mug at this point doesn't raise the average level high enough to mess with anything. Because I've already got all the level 6 characters that I'm ever going to get. So if I pick up level 11 Mog now... Down, left, up... If I pick up my level 11 Mog now and then grab Cyan and Locke, they'll still be at their level 7. And as I mentioned earlier in an earlier segment, left one, up one, well, more than one. As I mentioned in an earlier segment, the fact that Locke is level 7 and not level 6, meaning that I get to go through the Phoenix Cave with the Moogle Charm, will save me a lot of grief. And it's not the sort of grief that I can prepare for and then cover every angle, it's just, oh, I hit a phase encounter, restart. So, I'm not at all bummed up, of it, uh, bummed out about that.
Alright, that's not a very far distance at all. It's like two steps. Don't need to put that much safety on it. Just walk up to the top of uh, this room under the bridge. I remember this from before, too. Right one. I don't remember the battle. That was a new one. <laughs> at least Gogo is pretty much completely protected from these guys, I hope. The rest of the party seems to be taking a beating, though. Still have two characters alive. Still have three characters alive. Oh, everyone's still alive. One, two, three. Now I just go left and up for the next ten years. Because I don't have to deal with the security checkpoint anymore, I can just continue left and upping through that area. Makes things rather simple. Go in this direction. I think I might have made it because I'm not getting any encounters right now. If I didn't make it, it should be rather simple to find out because there's a door up here, which means I should shut up and try to listen for it. Well, I heard something, at least. That was pretty fast, too, especially compared to all the other battles so far. There's my door. All the way up to the top now. And let's remember the dimension of a two-space wide object, please, this time. Because that shouldn't be very difficult. Right. Another battle. Definitely getting more battles on, than on the last run through here. I think I've gotten about maybe twice as many so far, believe it or not. <laughs> I was walking some pretty extreme distances before without getting in any battles, which was actually worrying me somewhat. Ooh, totally just got blocked. Like a boss. Right. Now I go up. Now I go right. Now, here's this uh, two-space wide object I've alluded to several times by now. Top left corner, above the left side, above the right side, top right corner, down into the thing now. Now, hopefully I should be in the next room. <laughs> Should have made a plan actually for what happens if I get stuck in that notch of the top right hand corner again like last time, but you know, it's too late now really. Hopefully I just made it properly with no issues and totally fine. I mean I don't think I messed up the dimensions of it again. I'm just worried that I didn't press the up button hard enough on that first press because something felt weird. This isn't a very far walk. This one, however, is a very far walk. I think I just went right, so I'm next going up. That was probably Go-Go evading with his white capes there. In fact, I think it probably had to be Go-Go. Simply no other explanation. Unless if somebody else has a cape that I'm forgetting. Pretty sure there's absolutely no chance of it playing a standard miss noise if, uh... I've got shields and enhancers equipped and stuff like that, so... So, hopefully this time I've made it to the top right of the maze as expected. Wormed my way through the entire maze with uh, just the right and the up button. It's not very much of a maze, as you can probably tell. Now I can go left and up. 
and I'll be up near where Terra was unconscious all the way at the beginning of the game. Hey Terra, remember this spot? It's a great vacation destination. I'm sure it's just uh, tripping the old nostalgia thingies. Oh, uh, someone just died. Do I only have one character left? And by one character I mean Gogo? -Go? I went up there instead of left because I'm pretty sure there's no way up will throw me off there. I'm, I'm getting battles where I'm expecting them this time unlike the last time so I'm feeling a little bit more solid about what's going on. Could just be chalked up to luck theoretically and by luck I mean bad luck in this case but hopefully that's not the case. I hate dungeons that are caves like this. And unfortunately, I've got a big one coming up, the Phoenix Cave. Mount Zozo isn't that bad, I don't think. But if I make it to Mog, I've made it through most of the distance of this segment, and I consider it fairly unlikely that I'll fail after Mog. The bit between the door and Mog is probably the worst of it. As uh, noted by the fact that I actually failed there once already. There we go, there's a Mog, there's my Moogle. Hello, how's it going? I'm gonna temporarily name you MAGA. You're very useful. Because, well, you can get perfect defense for one. I don't know if I got another behemoth suit while I was farming for my uh, traveler spewing rage, so... I don't know if I'll be able to give both you and Gao perfect defense at the same time, but it might still come in handy. Alright, grab that Moogle charm, because that's the other thing that I really want Mog for. I've already got a character who can do perfect defense, and he can spew travelers, but I've got no one else who can avoid all random encounters in an area and speed up the length of these videos significantly. The only downside is that I don't get an indication of where I am every now and then, which is unfortunate because that's actually kind of handy, but also I don't have uh, battles interrupting my mojo, essentially, so my momentum, so there's that, and that's probably worth just as much, to be honest. Battles aren't the greatest indication of where I am anyway because they're too random, let's be honest here. Up, left. Alright, so first I'm gonna grab this ribbon. It's a pretty random. Ran Ugh. Handy thing to have. For all I know, I'll never use it once, but. It's handy to have around nonetheless. And don't tell me I somehow messed that up. Wait, did I go two down from the uh, thingy-majiggy? I think I did. Alright, I know there's a big flat spot on the wall here, so I'm just gonna go three up and right. Well, three right and ups. Scale up to the top flat spot on the wall, down one, and that should line me up with the cave all nice and ready, I hope. And just in case it didn't, let's just put some insurance on that. And now hopefully I can make it to the chest. There we go. That shouldn't have been hard at all. Kevka's tower should be really easily thankfully because I've got save points like pretty much everywhere in that dungeon. So that breaks it up into a million little tiny pieces that I can easily digest. Alright. Left one. Up one. Right a bit, and let the battles begin. Here I've got to be fairly careful because there's one step openings here and if I go the wrong way at any point I could throw myself off massively. Down. 
down, right, down, right, down, right, right, down, right. Alright, I think I might be in the clear now. down it's the next direction I need to go in. It's down and right, up and right, and then left and up, and then I reach the chest. The other chest, in case you're wondering, is an elixir, which I've got nine of those. The only thing they do is help me heal HP and NP at the same time. It's really their only claim to fame, and I don't care that much. There we go. Pod bracelet is now in my possession. That's the save button. It doesn't help me. Warp stones, however, do. Since I don't have Handy Dandy Edgar in the party. Well. That's... Probably the last dungeon without any access whatsoever to the Moogle Charm. So let's knock that one off my list. And now I have a friendly Moogle. You are level 11. Which is fairly high for the LLG. Only Gao gets higher with his 14. Which is absolutely massive, to be honest. Considering it's over twice as much as the majority of the cast. So, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just, uh, see you next time. <laughs> okay, uh, the painful thing about this mini segment is that I have absolutely zero audio cues until I get to the save point, which is annoying. The absolutely nice thing about this segment is that I already know the route, because I did this not too long ago. So I just ran through for a quick refresher, and no memorization needed, so that's nice. However, I won't be hearing a single thing except this Dark World theme until I get all the way to the save point. There's nothing in Narsh to trigger, no doors to open, because I'm not going into the buildings right now. Just grab going up to the top to grab Umaro, then I'll only need one last trip back to Narsh to get the uh, Paladin Shield and the... Uh, Illumina later, but for now, let's just keep going this way. Brighten up a whole bunch. Need to be very careful now, because I won't get... If I make a mistake, I won't know in any way, shape, or form until I reach the end of the segment, and that would be a pretty nasty surprise to get when I don't hit that save point. Because I could literally be anywhere throughout the entire segment and have no clue where I am. At that point, might as well just restart, right? Left and up to go up the second set of stairs. There's not really a whole lot left to talk about in this segment, considering I've already gone through this route before. Once in the uh, segment a few times ago when I climbed the mountain, once in Brave New World when I uh, went to get Mog. But here I don't need to get... Here I never needed to get Mog in the World of Balance. In fact, I couldn't get Mog in the World of Balance without messing with people's levels in an adverse way, so... Actually, it would be theoretically beneficial, but... It would ruin the whole point of my challenge if I, uh, we were giving people extra levels willy-nilly and stuff. I mean, I did give Gao an extra level from the still life that I probably could avoid, that I could have definitely avoided just by not getting Realm, but, hey, whatever. Personally, it just doesn't feel right not to get all the characters and all the espers, so. Down. Now I'm in the bottom left corner of the box. I'm at the top left corner, I'm at the top, up and right, and now I go into the door. 
Hopefully I didn't mess up the dimensions of one space tile or object, or I just fail at life, really. This stream is pretty easy to navigate. Just gigantic C with a go up at the end and stuff. Down. Thankfully it's only going backwards through this room that's a pain in the butt, and I don't need to do that anymore in my entire life. Because there's no absolutely no reason to go backwards through this room. I already have plenty of warp stones. If I run out, then I shall have seriously made a huge grievous error somewhere. Like walking in and out of a dungeon just going like, Wee, I can use warp stones. <laughs> in which case that would be likely a case of me deliberately being an idiot and not accidentally being an idiot. Yeah, that should be enough for that one. All the way up to the top. Thankfully, Phoenix Cave will have some audio cues, so I won't be going through all of that completely knowledgeless as to where I am. Is knowledgeless a word? Knowledgeful sure isn't, because knowledgeable is the word for that. So, I bet it's not, but whatever. Two, down. Left out the door. This reminds me some of it of Mount Colts towards the beginning, because I really wasn't getting a lot of audio cues there, but th there I had the battles even, so... I don't know. This could be, on some sort of technical level, the worst navigation segment of the entire game. In fact, so there's plenty of save points in uh, Cues and Kefka's Tower. Ancient Cave has the save point. Well, Ancient Cave will be pretty bad as well. It'll have a couple chests open though, so. Right one, down two, now I'm on the bridge. The save point is placed fairly nicely in both this dungeon and the Ancient Cave, about halfway through, right where I want it to be. Though in the Ancient Cave, considering I have to backtrack, it's more like a third of the way through to be honest, but... I'll end up coming back after the second third, so it doesn't really make much of a difference. Up, left, all the way up to the top. And this is the room where I could traditionally get lucky and possibly get a battle telling me exactly where I am. But, no such luck now. But overall, it still might be a plus. It's definitely more of a plus to have the Moogle Charm in dungeons that give more of an indication of where I am. Periodically, that is. Yumaro's Cave will be really easy to navigate. That'll be its own mini-segment, but it will be a very simple mini-segment. Now I go right and up until I enter this cave right here. If I do this correctly this time around, and if I've been doing it so far correctly this time around, then I'll probably finish off tomorrow's cave tonight. If I don't do it correctly, I am certainly not going to have the patience to try again at this time, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll try again some other day. Hopefully I'll make it through. Gotta have confidence, right? Confidence when I ha that's all I have when I don't have any indication at all. Two down, and now I can go right and up, and... And now I make it to the outside, where I'll run into this little gap that's so so handy at stopping me from running off into the wild blue yonder in the, uh, snowfield. Definitely these right and up portions are nicer. With the uh, Moogle Charm, because no chance of a battle up interrupting me halfway through and causing me to be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going up or if I'm going right, and I'll probably choose the wrong way now, because I'm scrubbed here. I probably made it there. 
left one, up all the way. This might actually be almost no shorter than doing it with the battles included, because I think I'm putting more safety on things this time, spending more time blabbing about nothing, even though I have honestly less to talk about than ever before. Let's top here. left one and now I can go up and right for a long distance and if I've done everything correctly so far I'm getting very close to the end here but I've got to spend quite a while doing this or I might sink the boat right now Alright, I have probably made it to this top right corner of the snowfield here. Left one, up one, all the way to the left. Alright, so the moment of truth is about to approach. Did I do everything correctly, or am I going to be canning this entire segment? Because there's no way I'm trying to recover from wherever I happen to be. It would be faster just to restart, almost certainly. Good. Oh, my battery's running on. Just some time. I don't have anywhere to plug in my PC in this hallway. Sorry. Uh, Alright. One more mini segment to go here. Well, despite the whole spiel I did yesterday about, oh, if I finish this segment now, I'll complete the, uh, the, I mean, if I finish the mini segment now, I'll complete the whole segment tonight. And if I don't finish the segment now, I'll wait till tomorrow. I ended up having to wait till tomorrow anyway because my battery died, and there was no way to replenish that down here, so I had to go back to my room. And of course, that's a no no for recording because my roommate's in there. And I don't think. I get the feeling that he wouldn't probably like me recording in there, so. I had one roommate where I could pretty much record in the room at any time and he wouldn't care. Because he'd usually study outside of the room, so... That was never a factor, and... Man, I swear this is loud, even though it's on 16 volume, which is what it always is. But yeah. And he was out of the room a lot for studying, for meeting up with friends and stuff, so pretty much had free reign, but not so lucky this semester. My roommate's almost always in the room, and I mean, I haven't really asked him if I could record in there, but I, I'm, I'm fairly certain of what the answer would be anyway. <laughs> back one again. Just gotta go back, or it's one before I take every movement here. There we go, I'm in the cave now. I have to wait till the movement starts, even though I can move slightly beforehand, because otherwise there's a weird pause when the music starts. The game just sort of lags for a second, and that uh, might throw me off. One, two, three. Now I know which hole I'm running into this time. There we go. Alright, now I'm on the bottom floor and I can walk across this bridge. Which isn't very long, because it's just a bridge. Now I go down and right a bunch. And my navigation here is kind of weird, because I end up stepping off the bridge and then completely backtracking my steps here. But this works. It's probably the fewest number of steps I can manage. Like, fewest number of memorization steps, because, uh... Otherwise, it just gets awkward. Without counting, that is. Which I suppose I could do a little bit more easily now, thanks to the fact that I've got no random encounters, but... And I don't have to remember a number. One, two, 
three, even if a battle happens to show up in the middle like a douche. So I walk all the way to the right here. I hit this thing, walk up to the top, and I just barely have enough room here to hit the... to slide along the side there, and then... Well, I guess it would be like Siddle, or Sidle, or however that's pronounced. Siddle al along the side. So now I walk up this bridge. All the way to the left. Now, back one, and then this room is pretty intuitive. Unlike the last room, which is just wacky. This room, I just reach the top, walk straight past the dummy switch, and then the bridge can be my guide, my mental guide in my memory. Especially since I've done this before just recently, this becomes really easy to do. Hello. One, two, and then I approach the staircase one, and now this segment is practically over. Just gotta go up and right, mash A, and things will happen, and on their own of accord, and I don't need to worry about it. Let's just do the menu trick to make sure that I'm talking like I'm supposed to be. Oh shoot, I just backspaced his name, didn't I? Well, that was unexpected. Uh, so what shall I name him? Uh... <laughs> hmm. Uh, the letters are in alphabetical order, right? Maybe I can navigate this, because I don't think I moved my cursor around much, did I? So I should still be on A here, I think. Let's see if I can get him back to being Umaro. If I mess up, well, he's stuck, and I don't really care, because I probably won't be using him. You? Is that right? Only time will tell. go over to the lowercase. Alright, now, now I should be on lowercase u. If I, uh, got lucky. And if I didn't, I'll be naming him something straight out of Abyssinum's Beyond Chaos Randomizer. Uh, oh gosh, going backwards is even more difficult. Is it four back to the top? I don't know. I'll find out how close I got afterwards at the end of this segment, too, so... Oh well, just for kicks, I guess. I'll probably just put a skip to some place annotation there, because it's hard to commentate while counting through things in my head. Which I probably made a complete disaster of, but it's still hilarious to try. Alright, so I should be right under the airship, so now I can just take this off and see what ridiculous name I just gave Umaro. <laughs> it's his punishment for sucking so bad. Alright, hello? Umakan. <laughs> well, I, was, I got the first three letters right, apparently. Umakan. Sounds like a 
name for a Pokemon that Jared would come up with a Nuzlocke. Uh. So yeah, level 6. I thought he joined with uh, plus some levels. But apparently not. He joins at the average level of my party, so I do in fact have another level 6 on my team. Because with Realm, my average level is 6 right now, so... Speaking of which, maybe I should just go get Strago in this segment. I am, of course, going to save this time. You know what, Umakin, you can come with me, because I'm not going to bring you to do anything else, that's for sure. I'm gonna go grab Strago in this segment, clean up loose ends. I think I can do that, right? Uh, I'm not gonna bother. I'll do that later once I've gotten Cyan and Lock, so that I'm surely doing it correctly. Speaking of which, let's plunk myself down in front of Zozo because that's really where I should be going next. That's uh, the second last trip to Narsh out of the way. Just got one more after I get our resident treasure hunter into the party. See you next time.